Chill Computer Guy. Today we're in Bitwig Studio 2.3. We are going to talk about the edit, the edit panel, the edit. The edit is probably my favorite uh, uh, section for working with audio. The problem with the edit panel is there's no way, you know, you can bring up your instruments down there and you can bring up your, your mixer, you know, your fader, which I, I just, this is not much use to me. What I want down here is I want my clips and I want my arranger, you know? So, yeah, these buttons right here, okay? These buttons. I wish there was a way to uh, make, I don't, I don't want to see the fader. I don't want to see the fader or any of this shit. But what I want to see is the clip launcher. This is me. I'm in, I'm in edit mode right now, okay? And these are the icon. These are my icon choices. So, to be able to make the, uh, the, the, the fader in this part of the mix channel disappear, but to be able to open up the clip launcher instead, that'd be a huge thing. Bitwig, get on that. That's what I'm saying. All right, let's talk about, um, let's make this useless thing go away. Let's uh, go into edit mode, and uh, we're going to have to, so we have to go down here to the arranger and click on that, and then go back to edit mode. It's, it's a fucking nuisance, I swear. Hmm. All right, so you can see this is our automation lane. We can turn that off or on. Um, but mainly we see our audio. This is it. This is our edit workspace, okay? So we can look at either MIDI or we can look at audio. We're looking at audio right now. Um, and then these are the audio events. We can do a stretch. It's going to show our stretch markers. We can create stretch markers. Our onsets. This is our onset. This is where the... Uh, this is where the program is telling us the transients are. The darker blue are, are heavy transients. The lighter blue are less definitive transients. Um, maybe a sensitivity slider on here. That'd be great. Unbelievable. Uh, so, yeah, sensitivity slider right here would be great. Uh, the gain, we have a gain envelope, a pan envelope. Those are self-explanatory. Uh, the pitch envelope is, is pretty cool, pretty gnarly. Um, what's great about it is you can actually zoom in on this, you know, get this real, real precise. And you can see to the left, there's your semitones. And if you click on this icon right here, you'll snap to the semitone. So you can actually, you know, snap right to the semitone. Well, that's pretty damn cool. Not only that, if you hold the Alt key, you can make curves, you know. Now also if you hit number two on your keypad you'll get the time selection tool. You can actually select a marquee and then if you hit control L you'll uh, snap the loop marker to that marquee. Now when it gets there <laughs> Now next to that is the format filter. The format filter is all that. The format filter is unbelievable. First off, let's talk about deleting these automation points, okay? If you select this automation point and you have your inspector open, you're going to get the exact position and the exact value of that. So you can actually dial in exactly where you want that point, and that's super handy. Now another thing is with the selection tool, you can actually lasso multiple points. And in this case, I selected all the points. You can hit delete. Now you can also select one point and hit control A. You should be able to, you can't. That's a son of a bitch, isn't it? The fuck, really? Anyway, you can't hit control A with all the points. That would be something, yeah, yeah, Bitwig, you gotta hook that up. Um, so the only way to select them all is to actually physically lasso them, which is kind of fucking annoying. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, pitch filter. Now we have the format filter. Now the format filter is something quite unique, quite special. Uh, what makes it unique is the fact that we have these new algorithms in the stretch mode. Now if you select the uh, clip header, you'll get your event, uh, audio event um, options right here on the left 
And if you select the uh, top part, that's the actual um, track, okay? So you can also, on the left here, select either your clip or your track, okay? In clip mode, you do have quite a few more options. You know, for editing audio, there's nothing better. Now, as far as your, uh, your stretch mode, that's going to be displayed right here. We have the stretch right here. We have tons of new stretch modes. I like the Elastic E Pro. That's going to give us uh, resolution, and it's also going to give us use of the format filter. And uh, what this is going to do is if we play this... So we do have the options to, you know, do stuff with the pitch, the format filter. So there's lots of options as far as editing your audio here in Bewick Studio. It's in a pretty amazing uh, audio editor. All right. Now let's go ahead and lasso all those. Hit delete. Whoops. We left one more there. Control. Yeah, I wish it was an easier way to select all the points, maybe a select all, or a way to just actually put the envelopes on a separate track. Or another good thing would be a way to to uh, mute the automation. Let's say I open up this and I do some automation. Uh, a way to, to mute that would be unbelievable. Um, again, in clip mode, you're going to have more options as far as uh, any kind of automation goes. This tutorial, however, is not about automation. We're talking about um, we're talking about working with audio. Um, if we go to stretch mode here, what we can do is we can position uh, stretch markers in here. Okay. Now you got to make sure that you're in one of the uh, modes that allows you to stretch the audio. Now we have uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten uh, stretching modes. We have granular, which is the stretch and the stretch HD. These are the modes from the old uh, Bitwig, but in 2.3 they added uh, the Cyclic, the elastic -E Solo, elastic -E, elastic -E Econo, elastic -E Pro, and those are spectral modes, as well as the unstretched modes, which is RAW, which is the default um, way the audio is, uh, is... That means that the audio is exactly as is. There's no stretching going on, there's no pitching going on. And then, of course, repitch, which means if you stretch the audio out, you'll end up with a lower pitch. If you compress the audio, you'll end up with a higher pitch. So, But nothing is basically going on with, with uh, the actual processing of the audio other than it just repitching. Um, now, the mode I actually like the most, there's two of them here. One of them is the elastic -E Pro. Not only will this give you very, very good quality, but it's going to allow you to control the resolution as well as the format filter. That's the mode we're in here. Um, you can see that we can increase the resolution all the way up to 512 and we can also uh, work with the format filter. Now another one I really like is the, uh, the cyclic mode because you can adjust the format but you can also adjust the grain size of the format which is going to give you some really unique um, sounds here. So let's go ahead and play this and of course we're not going to hear anything until we actually stretch the audio. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase the tempo which will stretch the audio and then we're going to apply the format filter and then we're going to switch grain size and you're going to really hear you get some very very unique timbres with that.
Again, some very, very unique textures. This is actually a really good way to take a very, very basic instrument loop and uh, really trip it out to the point, you know, you can use this in a, in a motion picture type setting, something where you need to take a regular noise and just make it really creepy. Of course, the more you stretch the audio, the uh, more intense the effect is going to be. But with the, uh, the cyclic uh, mode, you can actually adjust the grain size, and that's what makes it unique. Now, the normal stretch mode, these are modes from the old Bitwig Studio, and they're basically stretching modes um, that are just, I don't know, I don't want to say lower quality. They're just the standard stretching modes from the old Bitwig Studio. Let's go ahead and play through this, and we'll adjust some of these settings here. So this is a very, very interesting. This is the old stretch mode. Now, I don't remember it having this many options. Please comment below. Let me know if you remember it having this many options, but you can actually listen to the transients and you can adjust the rate. Again, this is as stretched as the audio can possibly be. This is 999, which is kind of misleading because the audio is actually stretching beyond that, but it's not displayed here. In other words, you cannot have a fourth digit under tempo, which is, again, something that I would like to see improved upon in future updates. But again, you can, straight, you can, you can switch the grain size, and then you can control if it's a, a hard transient and whatnot. That's the stretch mode. Now, the Stretch HD is going to be all those same exact options. It's going to be a higher quality. Now, the higher quality, of course, is going to use more DSP, going to use more computing power. Power. So if you're, you know, re-rendering this or, or using this along in, in tons of tracks, you might notice some fluctuation in performance. Now, um, these are granular modes. The next one is Slice. Now, as far as I know, the Slice has these additional options here in the 2.3 upgrade. I believe these are new, um, but it's basically a ping pong kind of tail delay you can add. You can add a, a 30 second quarter notes up to the onset, and uh, you have a format filter on top of it. So you can get some pretty unique timbres with this. Let's go ahead and take this a couple loops and listen to what it does. Again, a very, very unique um, mode for stretching the audio. Um, you get some really, really unique timbres in there, just taking a regular audio file and using slice mode. Now below that is Elastic -E Solo. Um, and that, again, is granular mode. These are all the granular stretching types. So let's go ahead and listen to this one. And this one's not going to give you any uh, a lot of options. You're basically only going to have your tempo to stretch the audio. So this is kind of an express mode. That's why it's called solo. It's just straightforward. Let's go ahead and stretch the tempo, and you'll see this mode has the granular effect, but it's just a, just a different type of flavor, if you will.
And again, some of these stretch modes, you might want to actually compress your audio and get it to play at a higher tempo to really get the effect of some of them to stick out. It's not always stretching um, the audio. It's also compressing the audio. Different stretching modes are going to have different effects on different uh, audio files based on if you stretch them or condense them. So as always, um, the best way to learn these and the best way to, to, to find the one that's going to work for you is basically trial and error. It's, uh, you know, playing with them, finding out what works for you. Now, that's the last of the five granular modes. Next up, we're going to switch to the, uh, the spectral modes. Now, the spectral modes are going to have a lot different flavor to them. We have three in this case. We have the Elastic Key, the Elastic Key Eco, and the Elastic Key Pro, which we've already talked about. That's the one with the most options. Let's go ahead and check out these first two. These are only going to have the tempo option. Ooh, see, I really like that. It almost gives it kind of a metal rustic kind of feel. Again, we don't have format filters or anything like that. It's just basically the mode and stretching the audio uh, gets that mode kind of popping. Let's go ahead and go with the Elastic -E Eco. This is smooth spectral stretching. This is going to use a lot less uh, computing power and DSP. Um, and it has a different flavor to it. Let's listen to this. Much smoother sound than the Elastic Key. The one unique thing about the Elastic -E Pro that none of the other stretching modes has is resolution. You can actually affect the resolution. Higher resolution, of course, is going to take more DSP and computing power. So, you know, if you're using a high resolution on tons of tracks in your session, you might have DSP issues, but it's really nice to be able to control the quality. This is why I like the Elastic -E Pro. It's probably my favorite stretching mode just because it has the most options. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip through all the modes here, playing the same piece of audio so you can kind of get a sense of the difference between the granular and the spectral stretching modes. And again, the last two, which are raw, which is basically the uh, the audio as is, and then the repitch, which will basically, as you stretch the audio or condense the audio, it will just change the pitch based on that. The other stretching modes, of course, try to maintain the pitch, um, even if you stretch or condense the uh, audio file. 
Um, but there's a lot of different ways to do it. So we have uh, five granular modes and we have three spectral modes as well as the other two raw and repitch. So check it out. Check out uh, the audio manipulation tools here new in Bitwig uh, 2.3. They're really, really quite powerful and they give you lots, lots of different timbres and flavors for your audio file. Now one more quick thing before we leave is stretch. You can actually create uh, markers to stretch your audio. Let's go ahead and go back to um, just the regular stretch and uh, as long as you have the pointer tool selected all you got to do is double click and that will bring in a marker. Um, if you're in raw mode or if you're in repitch mode markers are not going to be available to you. Now, if you double click anywhere in the uh, in the edit window you'll get the double arrow down here okay and you can see a fine white line from top to bottom this is actually you've created a marker now every single clip is going to have a beginning marker in the uh, lower left corner and that's basically the beginning of the clip so as I pull this away from there you'll see that very light uh, almost pink color that means we're stretching okay and the more I stretch it, the darker that's going to get until it eventually turns kind of a deep red. And that means that I'm stretching this audio quite a bit. Um, now if we go the other way, it's going to turn blue. Blue means we're condensing the audio. And the deeper the blue is, the more we're condensing the audio. Okay. So for example, if I uh, create a, a stretch right here and pull it, see uh, quite a bit of a direction here. It just gets this dark, dark red, you know. And so that's how the stretch markers work. Now, there's something that's very unique about the stretch markers. If you don't want to actually move the markers, but if you want to slide around the audio or stretch the audio within the markers, you can actually do that if you come up uh, right to the line that represents the marker, but not the marker itself, you'll get this icon, which looks like a time selection tool with kind of a little uh, speaker icon on the right and left of it. And this, what this is going to do is it's going to stretch that audio within the clip marker. Um, which is pretty powerful because what you're basically doing is you're taking the you're leaving the, the the time stretch markers exactly where they're at, but moving the audio within them, and that of course is going to stretch the audio one way or another, depending on which way you move your cursor. But you can get some very um, unique stretching by doing that. You're going to get one of the two icons depending on exactly where your cursor's at. You're either going to get the uh, time marker with the two uh, speaker icons and that will stretch the waveform within the marker or you're going to get the double arrow which will actually move the marker along with the audio. But they're both very very useful tools. Now a very very powerful button and a very powerful thing is the uh, unstretch. Now if you have this audio here and you have a bunch of stretch markers, you have this all stretched and warped, you got your tempo all out of control, all you got to do is hit the unstretch, okay? It's under your event menu, and if you click on stretch, it's going to automatically set the tempo of your clip to the tempo of your project. It's going to remove all stretching, um, all the markers that you've created, and it's going to basically put the uh, audio in a default state which to be able to do that is very, very powerful and very uh, useful because a lot of times you'll get in here, you'll put your markers down, you'll start to stretch your audio and manipulate your audio and you'll end up kind of with a mess. And so to be able to basically reset it to the default, that uh, unstretch uh, option is very, very useful. And again, it's under the event menu uh, here or you can click the... Uh, this icon here. I recommend putting it actually in your toolbar because you're going to find yourself using it quite a bit. So lots to take in there, lots of information. Like I say, feel free to watch this video again. Take notes because there's a lot going on. As far as editing audio here in Bitwig Studio, um, 
there's a lot to it. It's very involved, but it's very complex. And your ability to do very complex things is all laid out very, very nicely with great tools and a great look to it. Um, especially with your pitch and your format, your ability to actually see your semitones and have this nice grid and to be able to lock to that grid when you're doing your pitch adjustments or your format filter adjustments. Um, and then being able to, of course, add curves um, by holding Alt and to be able to, you know, highlight multiple things. Uh, um, just, just very, very powerful tools. Like I say, lots to take in. Be sure to watch this video again. Take notes if you need to. All these tools are extremely useful and all this knowledge is extremely useful. Remember, these videos, these tutorials, they're not for beginners, they're not for experts, they're for everybody. My main goal here is to inspire you to make music with your favorite digital audio workstation. This happens to be Bitwig Studio, which is kind of my uh, my choice as far as, uh, as DAWs at this point because of the tools that you have access to. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, click that like button, leave a comment, tell a friend about the channel. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys again. Bye-bye now.